Well, thank you for joining me uh, for this little update. Well, the season's over. The racing season I'm referring to. And man, I got to tell you, it was a tough finish for us with a lot of adversity. Uh, first of all, let's talk, let me talk just about the race team in particular. Here's some of the things that happened to us down the stretch. Um, one, of our, one, of our, one of our cars, the 18 car, was penalized at Dallas uh, by NASCAR, and we had to set out a race. That causes all kinds of problems. If you're a race fan, you kind of follow that. Uh, we then turned around in the chase with our two cars that were in the chase. We finished ninth and 12th. That's the worst we've ever done. And so we had a dismal uh, chase uh, for all of our sponsors and everybody here at Joe Gibbs Racing. Then we turned around and lost our nationwide owner's championship by three spots on the racetrack. And so uh, I can definitely tell you, it was a tough finish for the season, and you kind of look at the whole race team here. Uh, it, it was a tough way to end up the season. We had five wins, that's true, in Cup. We had a bunch of wins in Nationwide, but certainly the finish of the season was a struggle. Now, as, as going right along with that, in my own personal life, <laughs> what's been kind of happening to me, there's been a lot of adversity too. For the last uh, three months, it just kind of seems like... Um, in my life, it's been kind of a wave after a wave after a wave of adversity. Uh, Pat probably said it best the other night. She looked at me and she said, it just keeps coming, doesn't it? <laughs> and I looked at her and said, yes, that's, that's correct. So uh, it's been a tough time for us. Now, don't get me wrong. There's been some good things in there. But in general, this has been one of the toughest periods of my life as far as dealing with a lot of things here with the race team and personally in my life. So um, a lot of issues there. Uh, I just wonder if some of you might be going through some adversity like that. Uh, and so I kind of want to just start off the day by sharing some of my feelings that I've had during this three month period of just ongoing, uh, it seems like trouble. First of all, I have a tendency, and I'm confessing to you, to look at the circumstances, all these things that are going on, and I go, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. So that's one of the feelings I have. The second one that I have is discouragement. You know, I think in God's Bible, J. Vernon McGee in his commentary says that discouragement is the devil's greatest weapon. We get discouraged. And I'm confessing to you that during, during part of this time, it gets me discouraged. I really have to fight against it. And then the second, the, the other thing that I kind of feel is uh, I, I feel troubled. And then, if you kind of put all that together during these times, I fear, I, 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 I got to confess to you, I, I'm fearful. And so, I don't know if that's happened to you. Maybe you're going through something similar this period in your life. It just seems like it just keeps coming. But um, as I kind of went through that, uh, there's a, a lot of encouragement here, and I just want to share this with you, um, and maybe it'll encourage you. That would be my hope. During this period, this three months of adversity, I can honestly tell you that God's Word seems to come alive. Now, that's happened to me over and over again. Is when I look back in the past in my life at the different times where I've really been in real adverse situations. I've detailed on this show the financial disaster in Oklahoma, some of the tough things that have happened to me in football. During those times, it seems like God's Word really comes to life. And that's great. Uh, in the mornings when you start with Him, and the evenings when you, when you, before you go to bed, staying in God's Word, it seems to come alive for me. And... Um, one of, one of the verses that kind of, I'm going to kind of give you six little things that have happened to me that encouraged me. And I'm going to kind of share these with you. And maybe some of these would kind of ring a bell for you or be something that might encourage you when you're going through tough times. First, a verse just jumped right out at me. It was John 14, 27. And really what it says is this. God says in there, I give you peace. That's what he wants for us, peace. And he says, not that the world gives, 
What he's really saying is what he gives. It's his peace. We can have his peace. And it also says, so that your heart may not be troubled or fearful. And that's exactly what I was feeling. And so that verse, I, I think if any of you really want to kind of read John 14, 27, I think it'd be a real encouragement for you if you're going through tough times. The second thing I'd like to share with you is a little story, if you remember, uh, where Jesus was on the Sea of Galilee. He's told his disciples, and I've used this before and when I, in some of my talks with you, he told them to go to the other side, okay, of the sea. They start across, and they went right into a huge storm. Now think about that. <laughs> a huge storm. Jesus knew it was there. He knows everything. And so he sent his disciples right into it. And so I think the encouragement, the encouragement that comes from this is Jesus then wanted to use that as a teaching moment. There were some things he wanted to say to them. When he came to them on the water, when he calmed the waters, he was using that as a teaching moment. And I think the second thing it says to us is this, that we can be in the midst of adversity and still, okay, have a real peace and be in God's will and, uh, and kind of be claiming that, that portion of a tough time for us, knowing that we're in God's will. Okay, it doesn't mean he's mad at us or anything else. It means that he's using that as a teaching experience. So uh, we can still be in God's will and be in an adverse time. I think that's the second thing I want to kind of leave with you. Um, the third thing is um, um, Jehoshaphat. I've used this before too, but this encouraged me during this tough time. If you remember, King Jehoshaphat was told that there's a vast army coming against you. You got no chance. This, arm, this army really overwhelmed, would, would in numbers overwhelm your army. And so at first he was fearful, just like we've been talking about, but then he thought about this. He said, well, in the past, God has always been faithful. And so he called all of his people together and they prayed. And then in the end, he made this statement, which really jumped out at me. This might be a good statement for all of us. God, I don't know what to do but I'm going to keep my eyes on you. In other words, nothing is too big for God in that statement. And so I thought that was very, very encouraging to me. And so uh, I, I think that the other thing that kind of came to me during this period of time, the fifth thing I kind of share with you, is I want to make sure, it says in God's Word, stay focused on Him, okay, not on men. Many times men do what? They disappoint us. And so we need to stay focused on him. And it seemed like every time I take that approach, and I'm thinking about something and people are involved with it, and then I said, no, I need to keep my eyes focused on God. It seems to give me a relaxing feeling. And so I just share that with you. And then the last thing I would share with you is we just have to remember that God says in his word, and we feel in our heart, he loves us more than we love our own children or our grandchildren. Now, we have an all-powerful God that loves us more than we love anybody else, <laughs> than we can love anybody else. Isn't that great? What a great statement. So we have an all-powerful God, okay? He can do anything. And so that kind of leads me to the last little point. I've also shared this, but this kind of fits in with those six little points if you're going through real adversity. Um, if you remember, there's a little story in there where the kings of Israel were marching. Uh, that's Judah and Edom and Israel were marching against the evil king Moab. And um, basically what happens to them, they wound up in a valley and they were out of water. They got their whole vast army there and all the, all the kings are going, hey, well, we're going to die right here. And so they said, let's get Elijah, God's prophet, and see what he has to say. Elijah comes on the scene and he tells the kings this. This is what God is saying. He's saying, look, I want you to dig ditches in this valley. And they kind of all, I'm sure they went, what? Dig ditches? 
in a valley. Uh, and and he, that's what Elisha says. God says, dig ditches in this valley. Be faithful. And then he said, secondly, you're going to see no signs. Okay? You're going to see no clouds. Okay? There's going to be no indication there's going to be any kind of rain here. And that's what I feel. In this period that I've been going through over these three months, there are no signs there. Nothing to encourage me. But he says this. He says that God, an all-powerful God, is going to fill this valley full of water. And that's what happened the next day. And then he said to the kings, and this is what God said, this is an easy thing for me to do. So many times when we're in adversity and it looks like something that's, hey, you know, in this period of time for me, I'm trying to claim that. And so what I want to keep doing, I want to keep digging ditches. <laughs> I'm going after it. <laughs> I want to be faithful, knowing that I may not see any signs right now. But in the past, God's always been there. Okay, he's always been there for me. And I know that he's working. And even though I don't see any signs, you know, when we keep digging the ditches, God can do anything. And so in my life, I'm claiming the fact he's going to fill that valley full of water for me. And so I just try to encourage you with that. Um, hopefully that might help you if you're going through a tough time. I want to refer you to our GameplanForLife.com, our website. we got some exciting things there for you. we got some new articles on the website. Uh, one of them is on Sean Taylor. If you remember that uh, great athlete that, uh, that lost his life the last year I coached up there. It's called The Character of a Leader. Uh, it's the fourth year anniversary of his death. Um, another one of the articles on there is the Memorial of Thanksgiving Games in the NFL. The NFL fans might like that. And then we have one on Deion Sanders or Bo Jackson. Who's the best two-sport athlete? And then we got the top ten Black Friday shopping tips. Hey, sounds like something for all the ladies out there. Uh, then we got some upcoming articles I think you'll be excited about. Top 10 Larry Bird moments. Struggle and addictions of athletes. Top 10 Steven Spielberg movies. Top 10 Denzel Washington movies. And of course, some articles on Christmas. So all that's going on on the website. Uh, just want to refer that to you, uh, GamePlanForLife.com. This is our new, we're excited about this. This is the first thing out on our Zondervan project, our little New Testament study Bible. It's a game plan for life, the essentials of a Christian faith. And it's a, a little New Testament study Bible with 15 little study topics in here. If you'd like one of these, uh, just go to the website and we'd love to send you one free. So this little Bible, New Testament study Bible is there. You can obviously game plan for life. Uh, this is uh, our book and our project. Love to have you have the book. Go to our website. You can see where you can get that. And then, of course, we finished our Game Plan for Life small group study. If any of you would like to get that, it came out with, uh, with LifeWay. So all of those things are on the website. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, if any of you are going through some adversity right now, hey, I think we all kind of share in common. There's some things that we can really get from God's Word that will encourage us. Thank you for being with me.